Chinese from all walks of life came out today to pay their last respects to the woman regarded as the mother of the nation who impacted the lives of every Guyanese. President Barra Jagdi says Mrs. Janet Jagan's political vocation has created an enlightened humanism which has served as a guiding philosophy in the PPP. And as the final national day of mourning, Wang Dong, a 21-gun salute was afforded the late former president of the Babu John Crematorium as her remains were cremated. The details of these and other stories, and of course, we'll bring you the latest sporting action in the Diamond Mineral Water and NCN Sport News. Good evening, I am Janelle Persaud. And I'm Paul Moore. With this edition of the 6 o'clock news for today, Tuesday, March 31, 2009. Here's what's happening. Paul. Thanks, Janelle. Guyana began its second day of mourning with the funeral cortege for the late President Mrs. Janet Jagan, OE, with members of the disciplined forces dressed in ceremonial uniform this morning, leading the funeral cortege. This began the formal proceedings of the state funeral, which was held at Parliament Buildings, Georgetown. Centered between the Castellani House and the Office of the President is the military, which is taking over the cortege, uh, which is now en route to Parliament Buildings for the commencement of the funeral procession of the late former President. Mrs. Janet Jagan. The military procession is led by the senior officers, followed by the firing party. That firing party will inform the 21 gun salute. They're followed by the band, the marching detachments, which is followed by the horse riders. Then there's the funeral procession with the officers marching along the hearse. They are the bearers, followed by the mourners. The funeral cortege of the late president of Guyana began about 7.30 hours today with the trickles of a few scattered showers. In slow march, disciplined forces members made their way south along Blissingen Road and then west onto Brigdam en route to Parliament buildings for the commencement of the funeral service. On Brigdam, the cortege began normal march, while scores of onlookers in quietude paid their last respects. One such onlooker was the Vicar General of the Cathedral of the Immaculate of Conception, John Posod, who shared some thoughts. I met her a few times in unofficial engagements, um, but I think that all Guyanese will recognize that and will never question her commitment to this country. She really became a Guyanese, and, um, and I think her contributions on behalf, especially for those who are without voice, her work particularly with women and promoting them um, for a better way of life and for workers stands out in a, in a great way, I think, and a great legacy that she has left. At Parliament buildings, family and friends of the former president formed a party of Paul Bearers into the Parliament buildings compound for the state funeral. Former president, Mrs. Janet Jagan, OE, died Saturday last at the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation. Well, Sharda Lal now joins us to give us more details of the official state funeral service of the parliament buildings. Here's that report. There was a somber atmosphere at the public buildings as family members, friends, colleagues and well-wishers gathered to pay their respects to Ghana's first female president, the late Mrs. Janet Jagan. In her address, Mrs. Jagan's daughter, Nadira Jagan Brancier, said that her mother was always kind and willing to make sacrifices for those she loved. She notes that it was her mother's love for her father, Dr. Chedi Jagan, and later Guyana which propelled her to fight for the rights of the working class here. My mother was a very, very generous per person, as many can attest to. I could not count how many people she has helped over the years. 
either to find solutions to their problems, to help them to get a house lock, to find places to live, to get a job, and even to help them financially in any way she could, sometimes even, even leaving herself short. Granddaughter Vrindra Jagan says her grandmother's courage and resilience have had a profound impact on her life. My grandmother stood for everything I believe in and was exceptional. She was a foreigner that came into an unfamiliar country and defied the odds. People are generally unreceptive to the unknown. However, my grandmother never wavered. She stood up resolutely for all that she fought for and for all that she believed in. Home Affairs Minister Clement Rohi and PPP General Secretary Donald Ramatar also became emotional as they recounted the pain and suffering Mrs. Jagan was forced to endure in her quest for a better Guyana. For it was during this period that the vilest and wickedest forms of cutters, including public recourse to obia, pop political maneuvers and subterfuges, were used in an effort to dislodge her from office eventuating in the reduction of her term by two years. This undoubtedly contributed to her illness, but she bore the indignity with dignity, the insult with courage, and the gamut of indecency with resilience. Such was the nature of the woman. And the British colonialists were the first to try to demonize her. Maybe it's because of the fact that she was white and she was working among the ordinary people of this country. And by doing so, she was demystifying and destroying the myth of racial superiority. Meanwhile, opposition leader Robert Corbyn believes that the former president's death represents the passing of an era. He notes that she has left a legacy of rich service to the nation. It would be true to say that Mrs. Janet Jagan gave of herself to her party, her beliefs, the struggle of the working class of Guyana, and for the independence and development of Guyana. The late former president devoted over 60 years of her life to help those without a voice, the poor, the working class, women and children. Mrs. Jagan was the first woman to hold significant public offices and became notorious for her outspoken, brave and unwavering nature. She died at the Georgetown Public Hospital on Saturday following a brief illness. She was 88 years old. Reporting for the 6 o'clock news, I'm Shakti Lau.